In our previous video, we very briefly discussed the idea of negating a quantifier. We're going to formalize that idea here now. So we're going to write down two rules for describing how do you negate a quantified statement. Our first rule is if you have a not of for all x in some set p of x, that is the same as there exists an x in that same set such that not whatever we said. So we're trying to say everything in this set satisfies some predicate. The opposite of that is that there's something in that set that doesn't satisfy it, which hopefully intuitively makes sense. You're saying everything is of a certain type. The opposite of that statement is there is something that isn't of that type. So for every, the opposite is there exists and you just negate the inside. Notice that the set from which the variable is drawn does not change. The opposite of every single cat has orange hair is there's some cat that doesn't have orange hair. I don't care about things that aren't cats in that instance. It matters where the variables are coming from. With that in mind, and our double negation rule, you can eventually intuit that not there exists an x in d, such that p of x is a for all x in d, not p of x. So, just like before, saying there is something that satisfies this property, the opposite of that is that every single thing does not satisfy it. So the opposite of a for all is that there exists, and vice versa. So some people visualize this as you slide the negation inside and flip the quantifier or something like that. We'll see this more later, but that's some way, the way some people visualize that. So to negate the statements here, we're going to start with the top one. We have not there exists an x such that x squared plus 1 equals 0. We switch the there exists to a for all x, and then x squared plus 1 equals 0. The opposite of that is x squared plus 1 doesn't equal 0. So the opposite of saying there is an x that solves that equation is saying that for every single x, it does not solve that equation. Similarly, for our next one, for all n, it, the, that equation is prime. The opposite of that is there exists an n such that it is not prime. So not prime n squared plus n plus 41. So the opposite of a there exists a for all, and the opposite of a for all is a there exists. And you just move the negation inside of the quantifier. The next one is every algorithm halts. We saw this example earlier. So the opposite of this is there exists an x such that not algorithm implies halts of x. And as we saw in our predicate logic, the negation of an if-then statement is not an if-then statement. So we write that as p and not q, for p implies q. So we write this as algorithm of x and not halts of x. So there exists an x such that x is an algorithm, algorithm, and that algorithm does not halt, halts x. Which should make intuitive sense again. If you say every algorithm halts, the opposite of that is that there's some algorithm that doesn't halt. Hopefully that makes some sense. Let's do the next one a little faster then. We write this as there exists a P such that we have an if-then statement inside of our quantifier. The negation of an if-then is not an if-then, so P implies Q. The negation is P and not Q. The P in this case is this first thing. So we write this as prime P and P is greater than or equal to 2 and not odd P. Which we could write as even if you're trying to actually write the opposite, but maybe you're trying to be very vague because we didn't say where p comes from and there are certain numbers that aren't uh, integers and blah, 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 blah. Rather than dealing with all those details, we'll just let whoever needs to deal with the sentence deal with how they translate that back into English. But this is saying that for every single prime number greater than or equal to 2, it is odd. And the opposite of that is that there is a prime number greater than or equal to 2 that is not odd. In this case, it would be false because 2 exists. 
Our next example says that there is an even prime number. So let's write this as the negation, which is for all, because it was a there exists. Then we have an and. The negation of an and, according to De Morgan's laws, is not or not. So we have it there for every y is, is either not prime or it is not even. Which is written a little weird. You could rewrite this as an if then that could help you. So you could write this as equivalently for all y prime of y implies that it is not even. If you remember, there's an equivalence that we talked about before, which is that an if then is the same as an or. You can use that in the backwards way to write it this way. So the original statement was there is an even prime number. The opposite, maybe an intuitive way to say that, is that for every number, if it's prime, then it's not even. Which is, again, intuitively, in some sense, the opposite of that. It's There is something that satisfies it. The alternative is that every single thing of that type is not of the second type. Our last example is another implication. So this for all changes to a there exists an S such that it is a set and it is not a subset. So right, that is S is not a subset of itself. So this says that there's some set that is not a subset of itself. So that is the opposite of the original statement, which is that every single set is a subset of itself.